just to put things in context, Jamaica has about 230,000 registered farmers and about 20,000 registered fisher folk. Clearly they span the length and breadth of our island, but we do have um, an, a number of areas that have the majority of our farmers. Clearly I am from the breadbasket, um, St. Elizabeth is so named because of our contribution towards production and um, the amount of farmers that we have. During the COVID-19 crisis, as most economies of the world, our economy did grind to, to a screeching halt. Our tourism sector, our hospitality sector, our restaurants, um, all had to adhere to the medical health guidelines and as such went through a period when they were not in operation. That largely meant that there was a significant fallout in the market for our farmers. A number of farmers directly supplied the tourism industry and supplied that only, that's their only source of market and income. And as such, with the downturn in the tourism industry, we saw a significant impact on our farmers. Thankfully, and quite proactively, the government responded. So we did a number of things, partnering with our private sector. Um, through our initial stimulus program, we put about 240 million Jamaican dollars to help our agricultural sector, to help our farmers. We started a direct buyback program. So the farmers who had excess produce, what we went through our rural agricultural development agency, we went directly to the field, to the farm gate, and bought that excess produce from the farmers. We partnered with our private sector who had cold storage, who had refrigerated trucks to store and redistribute those produce. And importantly, we held a series of mobile markets right across the length and breadth of Jamaica, taking the produce into areas where we had a high demand, a high volume of people who wanted fresh produce. Um, that program saw significant um, return and really helped save our farmers, save our farmers through this period and ensure that they would have some resources to one, take care of their families, but more importantly, to be able to go back out into the field and to do what they love. Through our buyback program, we moved about five million pounds of fresh produce, um, impacted um, at least 2,000 farmers, and it spanned across 11 parishes. So all in all, our farmers have been able to maneuver that period. And it was critical because based on what we have been doing for the last three years to streamline our agricultural sector, to encourage our farmers to get back into production, to support our farmers through direct programs, we have been seeing growth in agriculture. We did have two very difficult years where drought really wreaked havoc, but we said to our farmers not to lose hope and through initiatives such as the Ready One program, we were able to give some small scale irrigation supply to put those farmers in a position to be, you know, resistant to drought. And as such, we are started and have been started to reap the benefits of that. In fact, agriculture grew year on year by about 2%. But importantly, the last quarter, which is a quarter directly before going into the impact of COVID, agriculture grew by 7.8%. So, which means all in all, our agricultural sector is on a growth trajectory. And despite COVID-19 and the shocks to the supply chain, we want to keep it on that growth trajectory. Now, how can we do that? And this goes into the second part of my presentation. People often say, where is the plan in relation to agriculture? What's the overarching vision? What's the document that will guide what you do? Um, you know, there have been a number of plans over the years, but I don't think we have been able to bring them together into one cohesive document that says what will be your primary focus. And we fortunately took the policy decision to ask Jamper to lead the charge to pull together a national agribusiness strategy. And it was so termed because part of the vision is that we have to move agriculture from being seen as more of a social intervention program to be seen as a business. And as such, we asked Jampro to lead that charge to develop a national agribusiness strategy. And that was done. That was done last year. Jampro brought in a consultant and they developed the National Agribusiness Strategy, which is really a five-year national strategy around agriculture that really looks at social and economic transformation 
of the rural, rural economy, looks at varying business models and how can we develop supporting ecosystems to ensure food and nutritional security. The, transition, the, the agribusiness strategy is supported by an 18-month transformation plan, which really seeks to fast track the incorporation of climate smart models to do things such as establish an agribusiness intelligence unit and to address the persistent challenges faced in distribution and storage capacity. What we have done in relation to that agribusiness strategy is that the strategy calls for an overarching national agribusiness council, which we have already established. I have the pleasure of chairing, which will pull together not only various ministries, agencies, and departments that deal with agriculture to one solid space, but will also incorporate the private sector, farmers, those who are actively involved in the business of agriculture. Part of what we realized across the public sector is that oftentimes across ministries, across agencies, there are silos, um, different people are working on the same thing and hence you have duplication of effort. We want to remove that in relation to agriculture and streamline what we do. So our five year national strategy and action plan does have some key strategic objectives. I'll just go through a couple of them. One is to ensure national food and national, national food and nutritional security through the appropriate deployment of the country's resources and facilitation of joint national public-private partnerships. So at the heart of our agribusiness strategy is public-private partnership. We are very clear. If we are to move agriculture in the way that agriculture needs to move, it cannot be the government alone. Part of the government's role and the, the major part of the government role is facilitating investment of the private sector and public-private partnership. We're reforming the support for agribusiness and food production to really develop a holistic ecosystem that is profitable and facilitates commercial farming enterprises. Again, agriculture is not social intervention. We see agriculture as a business. We want our farmers to make money. And we want young people to be drawn to agriculture because you can develop a good life, a good way of life, and wealth out of agriculture. Part of our goal of the national agribusiness strategy is to sustain the rural economy by implementing re-engineered agribusiness models, supply chains, and value additional operations. Again, the reality. A number of our farmers go through periods of glut and shortage, but they're not real. You know, we have a glut of tomatoes in St. Elizabeth, but in Kingston, unfortunately, there's a shortage of tomatoes because of our logistic and distribution supply chains. More than that, worldwide, there is such a significant demand of Jamaican agricultural produce that we really should never have a glut. Once we're putting in place the right storage methods and the right distribution channels. So part of our agribusiness strategy is to deal with those longstanding storage and distribution issues. And finally, in relation to the agribusiness strategy, one of our priorities is to stimulate and catalyze innovation, investment, and commer commercialization across the entire sector to prepare adequate responses to climate change and value chain development. We will just say well, what will be one of the main priority goals of the administration in relation to agriculture regarding the agribusiness strategy is really to enhance our research and development capabilities. We really want to ensure that working with our academic partners, that Jamaica is at the forefront as it used to be in relation to agricultural research. So that is the overarching framework and that is what guides our development and how we're going to move forward for the next five years in relation to agriculture. Just to tell you quickly, we're not just talking about it. We haven't just put in a plan. We have also put our money where our mouth is. So coming out of our response to COVID, out of our budget, post-COVID, well, we're still in the throes of COVID, but after the initial impact, when we had to realign our budget, we put an additional one billion Jamaican dollars to our agricultural sector. And that is really to drive things like our productivity and production incentive program, where we help our farmers with inputs and markets for a number of select crops. We have selected Irish potato, onion, sweet potatoes, peppers, sweet corn, dasheen, cassava, yams, sorrel, spices, strawberry, pineapples, 
condiments and also small ruminant development as the, the, the priority areas that we will be providing direct support. Last year, we spent about $565 million. We plan to increase that by at least $300 million this year. That $1 billion will also help us drive our expansion to irrigation. We are very aware that in order to have a sustainable agricultural model, our farmers have to have access to water. Already, we're going to be pro providing some additional small irrigation kits. Already, we have ordered two um, new water trucks to help in the delivery of water. And more importantly, we have two massive projects um, over at least $500 million, which is in addition to the $1 billion, as I mentioned, of investment in the Essex Valley irrigation system and the South Clarendon irrigation system to bring water to farmers that now have to do without. We're also going to be focusing on plant health management, the fight against disease, including the tropical racehorse disease and the cocoa, the frosty pod rot disease. We will enhance those interventions. And finally, out of our $1 billion, we're also going to put in some cold storage facilities, some refrigerated trucks, which we want to do as a public-private partnership working with community farmers group to run those entities. So all in all, we are still in COVID-19, but despite the challenges, I think we saw a clear opportunity. And that opportunity was to encourage Jamaicans to consume more fresh produce. So through the work of the private sector, along with our ministry, we launched our Say Yes to Fresh campaign to say to Jamaicans, both here and abroad, consume local products, support our farmers. That has gone tremendously well. So while there was a crisis, is a crisis, what we see is a tremendous opportunity for us to enhance Jamaica's agricultural footprint worldwide by encouraging everybody to say yes to fresh. I look forward to your questions and I'm sure you will really enjoy the rest of this webinar. Thank you.